Hey everyone, let's talk about value shapes. Today I'm going to give away some of my secrets when it comes secrets when it comes to portrait drawing. Okay, so here is a quick little thing that I do with students when I am talking about finding the value shapes in a face. I do a lot of portrait work and I never used to do a lot of portrait work until I discovered secrets secrets were uh, finding the value shapes in the face the face is not flat it is more like an apple it's like the side of an apple your head is an apple face one side of an apple uh, it's not flat There's lots of convex concave things going on on a face so uh, just to illustrate value shapes here I have this lovely portrait of Morgan Freeman which I have traced the value shapes, I'll line it up here, of his facial features in contrasting light. And then you can see these value shapes look a lot like Morgan Freeman, right? Okay, cool. So let's practice that. So we're going to take a magazine photo here of this lovely lady, and we're going to trace all of the value shapes. So all of the shadows that I'm seeing around on her face, not even going to trace the edge of her face. I'm going to trace the shadows that are around her face. And by definition, the uh, face is going to come forward, get some of these shadows in the hair. It all comes down to value shapes, you guys. Um, also, I talk a lot about the value scale in terms of a spectrum from 0 to 10. So 10 being my absolute blacks, my absolute dark, and the uh, 0 being the absolute white. So right now I'm tracing all of my 9s and 10s on the value scale. And then I'm going to trace some of my low lights, some of my ones and twos. First I gotta finish my tens. Uh-oh, got some Miss Piggy nostrils going there. Okay, so I got all my tens. Now I'm going to look for my ones and twos. I'm gonna put less pressure, very key, less pressure on that B pencil. I'm using a B pencil by the way because it's gonna be a little softer on this tracing paper and it's not going to uh, dig into the paper. It's just softer. More like butter, right? Uh, and then when I pull that away, I'm gonna have a little bit of a crazy face going here. You can get to see another dude that I traced on this paper for a class in the past, but we're getting more of a likeness of that girl uh, tracing those value shapes. Now, I do not advocate tracing. I'm not a fan of tracing but I like tracing paper for finding the shapes because it's all about that muscle memory and finding the shapes. Okay, so next, another secret, secrets. When I was first uh, developing my portrait drawing skills, I used a lot of old photographs. I like to go to antique stores and I will buy old photographs like this and I've got a drawer full of them and they are really wonderful because you can see all of the values are very washed out and it's very easy to see those value shapes. So even though the face is not flat here, most of the contours of the face are appearing flat. Actually, my fashion magazine lady was the same way because she's photoshopped to get all those flaws, but here it's just the light just so washed out. So it's very easy to find these value shapes. So I'm gonna be like a cooking show here and say goodbye and then come back when I have drawn this lady on some lovely watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna add some ink to her. Cause again, I'm giving away my secrets today. Secrets. Okay, stay tuned.
Okay, I'm back. And I have drawn this lady on my watercolor paper. I did not get her likeness perfect, but I gotta go soon, you guys, so I'm not gonna bemoan it too much. The purpose of the video was to show you uh, how I draw value shapes and then add the varying values to them using ink. Uh, that was my end game here, and so uh, I'm not too worried about the, the fact that I didn't get her likeness perfect. If I had more time, I would uh, struggle some more. The struggle is real. Okay, so uh, let's get some ink going here. I'm using red. I've got my acrylic inks. I've got crimson. I've got hot mama red. And I've got some sparkly platinum pink. Okay. Um, I never was a girl who loved pink until I started painting with it. And then I freaking love it. Okay, what I like about the reds and pinks is that I can get them very transparent and that's what I'm going for. That's the other reason I love the walnut ink is I can get really transparent layers with it. Okay, so on that value scale, I need uh, at least my ones and twos and my nines and tens because again, she's very washed out and we don't have a lot of mid-tones. So I'm gonna get just a dab of my red here and a little bit more of my red. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit here. Uh, I got the crimson, I think this is the Hot Mama Red. I'm just gonna get some different tones going. I once had a woman in a class who wanted to know the exact number of droplets that she should use to get these uh, this value scale going on her palette and I was like ready to rip my hair out because uh, I don't know. I just, I just drop some droplets in there then I add some water, then I play around. It's all about experimentation. Um, one thing that artists know that I think amateurs don't is that there is a way that these materials want to behave and there is the way that you want them to behave. And when you can just let them do their thing and not force them too much and use them to your advantage when you can, you're gonna be a little more successful. So trying to manipulate them to death is a recipe for disaster. Okay, so I've got some good transparent layers here. That's what I wanted. And then I've got some really nice deep dark red going. Go ahead and add some water to that one too. Okay, sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to do until I do it. Then I'm going to get my favorite paintbrush and it is, this is actually not my favorite paintbrush, but I lost my favorite paintbrush and then they didn't have any more at the art supply store, but I like a good zero or a two over zero. I had a 10 over zero, but I lost it. Um, and then this is my trusty six over zero. I don't know if you can see those numbers over there, but that just means that they are very fine point paintbrushes. Okay, I use these for everything. This is the Creative Mark brand, and uh, I use them for oils, and I use them for inks, I use them for watercolor, gouache, lots of different things. Uh, walnut ink, I'm out of walnut ink right now, you guys, that's why. I'm using the red. Okay, I think I already said that. All right, so I'm gonna go to my lady here and I'm gonna start to fill in all of my tens. So using a lot of control here. I'm gonna start to fill in my tens on the value scale, which are her eyebrows. Not gonna do the whole thing. I might have to block you a little bit here with my left-handedness. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing because I'm not going to let the ink behave once again when it touches the next bit of ink. Okay, so I'm just jumping around here where I'm seeing a 10 on the value scale. I'm going to go to her hair a little bit. This red is maybe not as dark as I want it to be, but that's okay.
Okay, so there you have it. Rough little sketch with the absolute darkest and absolute lightest values. Uh, using an old photograph and uh, some water, watery inks. So, thanks for watching.